Welcome. September 10th, week three. We're here, folks. It's exciting. Okay, so here's your first task. Head over to Trans 101, Chan 2, and read and respond to two of your peers' reflections on the Serrano reading. Okay? Task two, we are actually going to read an older piece, but still super relevant, by Peggy McIntosh. It's called White Privilege Unpacking the Invisible Knapsack, still widely cited. And what I want you to do is I want you to take 15 to 20 minutes and just quietly read her essay and really look at it not only for its wisdom, but also because we're going to end up riffing off of her piece for the next part of class. So just, you know, take some time to read this, okay? Um, the reason why we're going to riff off of it is because when she gets to the end of her piece, she actually talks about how, you know, we need to consider how there might be other knapsacks of privilege that we uh, need to address too. And so obviously we're going to look at that. So just read this thing. It's pretty short, pretty accessible. Um, that is your second task. All right. Then you're going to stall for your peers, probably including me who <clears throat> are still reading the McIntosh piece, and just check out this video um, from Cat Black called What is Privilege? Um, Cat Black um, is a black trans activist and YouTube personality. Um, yeah, and it's a really good video. <clears throat> I clearly still have a frog in my throat. What are you gonna do? Okay, so. The fourth task is we're actually going to build from Serrano's piece, from Cat Black's video, and then also from the McIntosh piece to unpack the knapsack of cis privilege, okay? So you're gonna head over to this document right here, and this gives you, just take some time to read um, the instructions right here, but we're basically going to create a cisgender privilege knapsack right? Doing the same sort of format that McIntosh does. But I will say that um, we're not going to use first person I because obviously not all of us are cisgender. So we're just going to use a format that looks more like this. So I gave you an example. Cisgender privilege looks like watching a popular queer rom-com and not having to worry that someone will make a joke that dismisses your gender identity. Because that is in fact something that happens a lot in cis queer uh, stories. Uh, trans people still become a punchline and it's pretty terrible. Okay, so we're gonna do this collectively together for the remaining part of class. We'll start doing that around 4 30 p.m. So we're all in that document together. You all have editing permissions. Just as an optional um, thing, uh, I'm going to give you the option if you want to be on Zoom with me and with the rest of your peers while we're completing this exercise, you super don't have to. This is like no pressure, but I know that some of us, you know, want to see faces. Um, and so I just want to hold space for, you know, being able to uh, see um, each other's faces as we're working on these, these, this, this exercise. So I will be in Zoom um, and you can pop in if you want. You don't have to. Um, you can also pop in and um, leave your camera off if you want. You know, I mean, it's entirely up to you. Um, but I just wanted to have that option because I want you to feel like you're not alone if that's something that you are feeling. Okay. So that's what we're doing in class. For homework, you are going to be reading Dean Spade's some very basic tips for making higher ed more accessible to trans students and rethinking how we talk about gender bodies. And um, I said gender bodies, <laughs> gendered bodies. Enunciation is key. So yeah, that's what you're gonna be doing for homework over the weekend, all right? So you know what we're doing in class, you know what homework is, and I will see you in Slack. I will see you in Google Docs, and I might see you if you decide on Zoom, okay? Let's have a good day.